we're gonna begin the trailer upfit project today. And so this is the big trailer. It's 28 foot um, Vino's and like, like I said, for construction materials and stuff, this is great. Like this summer I got some, I think they're 14 or 15 foot LVLs uh, for building a deck and all that stuff. And I tried to like ratchet strap them onto this little trailer and it was just so sketch. But now I'll just be able to pile lumber, materials, whatever. I got this one pretty cheap and you know, it's just uh, is in good shape, but definitely needs a little bit of work. So of the plans, new lighting, new heating systems. So we're gonna put heaters in here, some uh, the Chinese diesel heaters. We're gonna throw those guys, um, you know, one in, one in that corner over there and one in the corner over that direction. I'm gonna set up the camera and finish pulling down these lights. There we go. All the old lights are off. That was pretty easy. Okay, these are my new lights. They're some LED strip lights. One package of these was like 20 bucks on Amazon. So, you know, we'll see how they go, but I think, you know, they're gonna be pretty, I think they're gonna be pretty good. Okay, so these are like a glue strip. I'm kind of trying to decide if I wanna use those or if I wanna use these metal brackets that they gave. I think I'm gonna try to see how well this like snaps on first. It's decent. All right, brackets it is. New light number one. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip back this. Gonna end up use, rounding it around a screw and screw it back into the self tap hole from the original light to ground this to the frame. And I'll just wire nut this to here. Be a temporary fix right now while I get everything else sorted. All right, we're done. I will definitely clean up the wiring later and make it all nice and tidy. Three, two, one. Awesome. Man, look how bright this is. Holy shit. This is sweet. It's day two of Trailer Upgrade World. This is a, what everybody calls a Chinese diesel heater. They're really good at producing a lot of heat. I'm gonna put two of these in here. So this is a 28 foot trailer. I can't tell if it's overkill or not, but here's, here's the plan. We've got some six inch L brackets. My thought is to put a piece of like two by four on top of this, um, screw in from the bottom and then screw in from the top and that should make it nice and stable and sturdy. So let's get started. there in a minute I'm gonna use my phone and just let's just see how level the trailer is right now just for oh my god it's <laughs> let's take a look at this it's pretty spot on I can't believe I actually have like the jack height set correctly that look at that that's pretty cool all right we're gonna put this up here man did I just nail that the first time what the hell Stuff never works that perfectly. Let's shimmy it a little bit.
initial mounting, done. That was all in all pretty quick. Like, we got two of these. So here's number one, or number two, whatever. Number one up there. Let's open up the accessories box. Let's see what we got, we got. Okay, so air inlet hose. Exhaust pipe, duct hose. This is the exhaust flange. What I'm gonna do first is just drive a, a hole from here to the outside, and then I'm gonna go from the outside in because I think cutting the metal is gonna be the hardest part of this. Okay, part one complete. Time for part two. Okay, doop, there we go. There's a lot of space in there. I can insulate the shit out of this trailer at some point. Okay, next step, this guy. Okay, so my plan is to get this mounted up with this top hole, with everything, get a screw in here, and get a nut on it, hope that it works, and then I will draw the other holes. Things through this trailer is a total pain in the ass. We could do with some locking washers. I think we'll get some little nylon guys if I can. But we are exhaust port ready. So that's the inside. And that is the outside. A little snow on there, I like, but yeah. Came out pretty good. Time to go do the next one. So this is gonna go right here. Here we go. Done. Now on to the next set of stuff. All right, so we already added four of these lights that are on the existing switch, but now we're adding more in between those. They're gonna be powered um, off of our other battery. So we are just wiring those in series. Is that the right term? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just running wires to each one and we're utilizing these existing holes in the steel frame. So I'm just pulling the wires through. And so some we've got running down. So this is hooked up all the way over and you can see we've got the some terminal blocks and the fuses. I'm gonna start wiring 
the rest of this in here with the power supply. So this is a 120 volt to 12 volt, 30 amp DC, AC to DC converter. So I'm gonna put this in this cabinet, run a power cable out, and then once this is actually hooked up, then we will have power to all this. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so we're getting ready. We're almost ready to test. We're right now, this is um, connecting all of the bus bars to the uh, DC power source. And once that's done, we can feed some power to it and hopefully all this stuff will light up if I've not done this incorrectly, which is always a distinct possibility. is 12.1 volts there we go so that should be that power now if I hit this switch yeah there we go your light came on this one was default it was the other way I guess they were already turned on the other ones are already off oh wait you didn't connect a negative on this one. Oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> well we've got power so if we turn these guys off, then we've got those ones. Ooh. Yeah. Let's see if the diesel heater will go on its switch. So this should okay. be heater one. Oh yeah, we've got power to the diesel heater. Day three, so we finished up the lighting and I got the first diesel heater fully, fully connected. So that thing is ready to go, ready to power on and ready to see if it see if it heats so i think i'm going to test that out it powered on yesterday and i'm still working on running some more power to different things i got to connect the power to the rear diesel heater and that one still needs the exhaust vent installed but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this tried going and then i'm going to go get dinner started and throw some chicken legs on a smoker and once that's done then i'll be in Good shape to keep working out here while all that stuff cooks. So the thing that we need to do here as well is we gotta set this to compensate for the altitude. And apparently there's a way to do this. Settings, settings, okay. One, okay, six, okay, eight, eight. Okay, perfect. So this should be the minimum Hertz rating. Let's get the altitude chart. Okay, P1, we're gonna drop to 1.1. We're gonna say, okay. Two is gonna go to three point, three point, let's go, yeah, 3.5. Minimum fan speed, 1750. Max fan speed, 4500. Okay, so this thing was starting up and I kind of abandoned the first start because I was worried that I had the exhaust pipe and the intake pipe in the wrong location. Okay, so on the screen, this little guy means the glow plug is heating up. This means the fan is spinning. This looks like air is going in and out. Yeah, so this should be drawing like a hundred and, yeah, 125 watts on startup. That's why it's, that's why I wanted to put that AC to DC converter thing in there because we were starting to, okay. The pump is kicking on, so pump icon is now on. Oh yeah, we're getting some exhaust burn off here. Definitely some packing oils and stuff that's burning off. 
I don't know if you can see with the camera. Take a look outside. Okay, we're at bar two. Definitely, yeah, more heat coming out now. You know, it's only been a couple minutes, you know, maybe four or five minutes. And okay, bar five. Okay, now we got some real heat coming out. A lot of people have said they had a lot of white smoke. I'm wondering if because I adjusted the altitude and the fuel ratio, maybe it's not putting out as much. Maybe it's running much more efficiently. Okay, clicking pretty good. All right, we've got all bars up, it seems like. Yeah, this is pretty, getting pretty warm, getting pretty hot, that's for sure. I'm gonna close up the trailer and let's just, let's see if we get some good heat in here. Let's see if it gets hot off of one of these guys. And I'll kick the lights on and, you know, we'll run, we'll run a good test. Oh yeah, it's nice and warm in here. Nice and warm. I mean, it's not a cold day outside, it's only like 25, so. But it's pretty good in here right now. It's evening. We're smoking some chicken. I had the trailer, the new diesel heater running for about an hour, and then I put it into switch off mode, and um, it takes some time to cool down. So, uh, let's see how our chicken's doing. Oh yeah. That's yeah, doing mighty fine. There's like that smoke at 225 and just getting good flavor. And now let's go take a look at the inside of our trailer. Well, let's go ahead and we'll just turn off our lights. It's pretty sweet. So you just got our rocker panel right there. And we're out. Okay, we're about to go outside and get started again, but I wanted to unbox my new vent lid real fast because I kind of figure like I should at least take a look at what that looks like. This was a part of the project I was going to try to get to today. If I don't, like, that's okay. I want to finish the install of the last um, diesel heater, get that up, get that tested and everything. But, you know, let's go ahead and just unbox this real fast. RV revent installation guide. Mark correct desired location using 11 inch template. Oh, this size of paper, that's perfect. Got some screws in here. Let's go outside and get set up for finishing up the rest of the install. Connecting the exhaust and air intake. Fire up heater two. Let's see if this thing works. You ready? So, this switch, that'll be heater two. We're gonna come back here. 
Here we got power. Let's do our altitude adjustment first. So we're gonna drop this down to 1.1, press okay. I'm gonna drop this one down to 3.5. Low fan speed setting is gonna go to 1750. High fan speed setting is gonna go to 4500. Okay, so we've got error E01 here. I'm pretty certain that's the battery voltage is not right. And I somewhat predicted this. So what happens is that we're getting some voltage drop. And if the voltage goes too low, and you can see over here on this panel, we're at 11.8, we should be at like over 12. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and turn everything off just like that. And see so our voltage came back up. So what I need to do is I need to adjust the voltage now so that we get some more power out of this. And that is, there's a very simple way to do this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the voltage from the power supply just a little bit. Okay, so now we're at 12.6. So as I start powering things up, so this will be the lights, like we'll bring those back on. Um, we're gonna bring on heater one, or the heater two at the back. Okay, so let's go back down here. And I've set this so it should work, so we're just gonna power it on. Unfortunately, you have to kind of power them up one at a time. And I can't exactly tell why, because I put a 30 amp DC power source in here to kind of counter this exact problem. But I think what has actually happened is because the fuel pumps in these things kind of pulse, they're um, inductive in nature and they draw a lot of current spiking wise. And so what I noticed when I had both of them running is that when the pumps would go, the voltage drop would be pretty intense. And so I don't think the inverter in here, the AC to DC converter has a lot of uh, capacitive power, meaning that it can absorb some of those spikes as aggressively as I'd probably want, especially when two of the pumps are running during the boot up cycle where we're drawing the most current. So it takes about two to three minutes for these things to hit steady state. And that means that the glow pugs turn on, they start producing heat, they're running, their fuel's pumping, and then it's gonna even out to the settings that I've told it to run to. So you'll notice over here, we've got some voltage drop we went from 12.6 to 12.4 volts. And our little power supply down here is reading 134 watts, which includes the, uh, the lighting overhead. And the lighting overhead is about 24 of those watts. So, you know, peaking about 144 right now and the ticking has started for the pump. So this guy is already kind of firing up and is in the process of doing that. And then um, I'm gonna go down to the next one in a little bit and we're gonna fire that one up as well. This useful template came with the, uh, the fan. So I'm going to take this up, I'm gonna drill some pilot holes through and then make sure everything's okay. And once that's good, then I'm gonna get the jigsaw and just cut it out.
here it is. The roof vent. It's got a fan in it, which is awesome. Um, let's see how it fits. Now the thing is you gotta put the hinges facing to the front of the trailer, probably for obvious reasons. Oh, are we, okay, yeah, oh wow, that's perfect. Like a glove. That's it. And you know it's good. You've kind of done a decent job with your silicone. If you see a little bit squidge out on the sides, you know, around, it means you got enough to really seal it. So yeah, there we go. Let's pack up and go inside and finish wiring her up. Full speed. Actually moves a fair amount of air. This is blowing the opposite direction on the way in. Okay. That's it. We're done. This project is officially over.